actually Keith's story, but um, okay, uh, Keith David, I'll, I'll get your question, I promise. Uh, Keith David uh, used to say jalapeno all the time. It was basically an equivalent of hallelujah for him, and it, it was something he got from uh, a blues singer. What's her name? Bernadine. What? Bernadine. Bernadine. That's right, Bernadine. <laughs> Who he, who he, uh, who I've never heard sing, but Keith swears by her, thinks she's the greatest. I'm sure she is, and uh, he uh, learned that from her, jalapeno, and he would say it all the time. <laughs> and you know, when we do our voice sessions, you know, you've got um, the control room, which is where I sit with Jamie Thomas and our voice director, and I sit second chair with Jamie. And then you've got the booth where all the actors are, and he's, you know, saying how can you for like a million times. <laughs> and um, uh, Jamie turns to me and says, I bet you can't work that into a script. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, I bet I can. <laughs> so Gary Sperling does his script protection Poor, innocent Gary Sperling <laughs> turns it into me for the final, you know, go through the way, I mean, the way it works for us is that uh, the way we worked it is, you know, we'd have writers and sometimes our story editors would write the scripts themselves, but generally, you know, we'd have a, a freelance writer um, work the script with the story editor and then every major step, premise and outline and then script, I would look at it and, you know, do my pass on it. Um, so, you know, the, I, I can't remember who actually wrote Protection, if he wrote that himself or if he had a writer doing it. I can't remember who the writing credit on that was. Oh, God, you guys are really falling off. <laughs> uh, but in any event, I, I do remember Gary was the editor on it, and, you know, he turns the script into me, and I work in all this jalap jalapeno pepper stuff into it just so that I can get Goliath at the end of the episode to shout, jalapeno! <laughs> And uh, Gary gets the script back. <laughs> and he comes into my office and he says, You really have lost it. <laughs> and I looked him straight in the eye and I said, Yes, I have. <laughs> so that last part's all a lie. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we did do the voice session, and um, the artists, including Frank, hated it. I mean, they, and, you know, I kept using jalapeno over and over and over again, and the artists really hated it. They thought it was completely inappropriate. It was like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing. And I was like, no, no, you know, it's fun, and again, we've got some younger audience, and I think they will latch on to it and be sort of cool, and they were like, no. And it was like, a I'm not kidding, it was like a rebellion. Uh, <laughs> Finally, Frank came in and said, you've got to stop using it. And so we reached a compromise, which is that we would use it like a curse word. <laughs> when we wanted a character to curse, but we couldn't obviously actually use a curse word, we would use jalapeno sort of as an under the breath kind of thing. And they were kind of okay with that, although they didn't like it. And so eventually, they so disliked it, what you'll find is obviously it doesn't exist until protection, and then there's a while when I'm using it all the time. <laughs> and like, you know, People would say things like, I bet you can't get Hudson to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, you know, one after another, every character begins to take it up, and then it begins to trail off and starts being used as a curse word, and then it stops being used altogether. And then um, when I did the journey, I hadn't used it for a while. Um, when I did the journey, um, I used it, and Jay, my boss came to me and said, I can't believe you're using this again. You know it's just going to piss Frank off. And I said, and um, Frank and I are great friends. But, you know, you do 66 episodes of anything with somebody. And, and after a while, you get on each other's nerves. And, um, and you know, now we're fine. Every, you know, Frank and I are cool. But at the time, um, it, it wasn't even like there was tension. It was just sort of like, yeah, that's why I did it. You know? <laughs> And then as it turned out, you know, Frank didn't end up doing 
um, even the journey. Um, you know, originally, obviously, the hope was that Frank and I would both do Goliath Chronicles, and uh, we didn't. And I only wound up doing the first episode. And Frank didn't even wind up doing that one, so uh, it didn't wind up mattering at all. But anyway, that's the help of the story. So, uh, you had a question back there? No, 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 no her. What did the idea give you a lot of Shakespeare stuff, and how did that go with Frank? How did that what? How did that go with Frank? Oh, with Frank? Um, Frank was fine with the Shakespeare stuff. We got such great material out of that. Um, you know, please, don't, from that one little anecdote, don't take any message from this that Frank and I were at odds on, on this show just because he hated jalapeno. I mean, Frank and I, I'm not saying we never fought. We, we both were so passionate about the show that we did clash on occasion, but we basically saw very eye to eye on almost everything. And when we did fight, it was always with mutual respect, because we both knew that we were fighting to make the show as good as we could make it. And we always found a way to uh, you know, not compromise what we were trying to do, but you know, find something, a way that worked for both of us. So please don't take from that anecdote that Frank had. But um, the Shakespeare stuff, I, uh, I'm just passionate about Shakespeare. I'm like a lunatic about it. Um, and uh, it pretty much began with Macbeth. We, I wanted a character. Anyone know Craven the Hunter from Spider-Man? Okay. I wanted to create a character, a human, to sort of hunt the gargoyle, someone who would be human, but be so imposing. Obviously, I didn't want it to do Craven the Hunter, but that was sort of, that was sort of where Macbeth started. Um, and I like the idea of making this guy an immortal, someone from more or less Goliath's time. And like I said, we had done the Scottish stuff, and I'm sitting here going, you know, a Scottish guy from Goliath's know, and Macbeth, with all the magic inherent in, in, the, in Shakespeare's Macbeth, just seemed perfect. And uh, once we had done that with Enter Macbeth, you know, the floodgates were opening. You couldn't stop me. Um, uh, Skur and Eisenberg came up with the whole Othello metaphor for um, what became Legion. I mean, I had the idea of doing multiple personalities for Coldstone was always in there, but to specifically make it, you know, Othello-ish was theirs, although they hadn't labeled the characters at that time, so I did. And I don't know if they were thinking Othello or if they just sort of, it was internal with them and it come out that way, but that was theirs, but I just sort of pushed on it. And then, you know, when we created the third race, Puck and Titania and Oberon, it was just a natural. And if the show had continued, we would have done even more of that because it just works so well.